The principles of negotiation are generally specific to a given situation, but many times they can repeat themselves in similar negotiations. For example, a purchase negotiation has as basic principles. One, the product or service being negotiated has a price, which is higher than its cost. That is, the seller will make a profit. Two, once agreed, the product's or service's price will be paid in the country's currency. Third, once paid for, the product or service will be delivered, or vice versa. These principles are so common that most of the time we don't think about them, except when a purchasing transaction doesn't follow the script. The price changes after agreed, the product service payment or delivery does not happen as expected, the transaction currency is changed, and so forth. In complex transactions that involve uh, formal contracts and or long-term agreements, having the negotiation principles crystal clear before starting negotiations is very important in order to avoid future problems. One way of guaranteeing that the negotiation parties adopt the same principles is listing them with the other negotiators. Everything that is not listed is supposed to be negotiable. For example, if there is a negotiation to buy a car and pay for it in five years' time with the initial price of $10,000, is the price paying upfront being kept in the case of five years installments or the total price to be paid in installments will be higher? If the latter is true, how much higher? And by which index it will be adjusted? Which car accessories are included in the price? Is the car color predefined or open to choose? In negotiating the car, both sides must make clear what is not negotiable, the principles. Principles may also include negotiation behavior rules. For example, in any negotiation, one expects that the local law shall be obeyed. In a complex negotiation involving people from different countries with different laws, this must be especially clear. Which rules apply to this negotiation? If it is a long-term, large-scope negotiation, in the case of difficulties in agreement compliance, who will decide what must be done and who is right in the dispute? A so-called principled negotiation would go even further. Not only the negotiations shall follow the law and pre-established rules, but they should have fair and balanced negotiation processes, having an ultimate goal that would be good for the negotiators and for a wider public. The international agreements to limit the global temperature increase, for example, would be candidates to this negotiation category. Besides the sustainable development principle, these agreements included uh, principles of responsibility over future generations, sovereignty of the negotiating countries uh, who negotiate for their peoples, and so forth. When principles regulate the negotiator's behavior and become behavioral patterns, they gain legitimacy. That will be our next topic. We continue in the next video. Okay.